The Idler in France, a sequel to The Idler in Italy, Volume 2, by Marguerite Power Gardner, is a captivating exploration of the French landscape and its people. As a sequel to the author's previous work, The Idler in Italy, this volume delves into the cultural nuances and social fabric of France, offering readers a nuanced perspective on the country. Gardiner's literary style is marked by its vivid descriptions and keen observations. The narrative unfolds with a sense of curiosity, inviting readers to accompany the author on her journey through the French countryside. The use of descriptive language not only paints a vivid picture of the landscapes but also serves as a vehicle for the author's deeper reflections on the people she encounters. One notable aspect of Gardner's work is her ability to capture the essence of the French way of life. Through her lens, readers are introduced to the intricacies of French culture, from the bustling markets to the quiet villages. The author's keen eye for detail allows her to highlight the uniqueness of each region, creating a mosaic of experiences that collectively represent the diverse tapestry of France. The characters encountered in Gardner's narrative serve as windows into the soul of the nation. Whether it be the eccentric artist in a Parisian café or the humble farmer tending to his fields, each individual contributes to the rich tapestry of French life. Gardner masterfully weaves these encounters into her narrative, creating a mosaic of human experiences that mirror the diversity of the French landscape. The author's exploration of historical landmarks and cultural sites adds a layer of depth to the narrative. Through her prose, readers are transported to iconic locations such as the Louvre or the charming streets of Montmartre. Gardner's historical insights provide context to these settings allowing readers to appreciate the significance of each location within the broader historical and cultural context of France. The theme of contrast is prevalent throughout the narrative, creating a dynamic tension that keeps readers engaged. From the opulence of Parisian salons to the simplicity of rural life, Gardner juxtaposes different facets of French society. This exploration of contrast serves as a commentary on the complexity and diversity inherent in the French experience, challenging readers to grapple with the nuances of the culture. Gardiner's narrative is not without its moments of introspection. As the idler in France, she reflects on her own position as an observer and participant in the unfolding scenes. Her musings on identity, belonging, and the transient nature of travel add a personal touch to the narrative. These reflections elevate the work beyond a mere travelogue, transforming it into a contemplative exploration of the self in the context of a foreign land. In conclusion, The Idler in France, a sequel to The Idler in Italy, Volume 2, is a rich tapestry of words that immerses readers in the sights, sounds, and soul of France. Gardiner's skillful use of language, combined with her keen observations, brings the French landscape to life. Through encounters with diverse characters and reflections on cultural nuances, the narrative transcends the genre of travel writing, offering readers a profound and intimate exploration of the essence of France. Whether one is a seasoned traveler or an armchair explorer, Gardner's work provides a literary journey that transcends time and place.